My name is Rosalia. I live in Pernambuco in northern Brazil, and I earn my living from a small piece of land where I produce fruit, cacao, and coffee. I also raise farm animals. Millions of small farmers all around the world earn their living by working the land just like I do. Like Xi'an in Asia, Sharik in Africa, and Manuel in Mexico, who all produce fruit, vegetables, eggs, and meat on their small farms. We're here today to talk about global warming. The planet is warming up because of excess greenhouse gas emissions. These emissions are mainly caused by two factors, fossil fuel burning and loss of soil organic matter. I'm sure you've heard about this problem. What you probably don't know is how global warming relates to the food system. And that's what we want to tell you about. Global warming is causing a climate crisis that's having terrible consequences for life on Earth. Every one of us is affected by fluids, drafts, and other climate phenomena. But almost half the greenhouse gas emissions that cause global warming are generated by industrial food production. Industrial agriculture has six main impacts that contribute to global warming. Deforestation, industrial farming, transportation, processing, refrigeration, and food waste. Let's look at each one of them. Deforestation. To begin with, industrial agriculture takes up millions of hectares of fertile land with single crop plantations called monocultures. This land is not just lying there idle, it has to be cleared. So industrial agriculture removes wetlands and woods to make way for the crops. In the process, the trees are burned off, along with the soil organic matter that sustains them. Carbon dioxide, on one of the main greenhouse gases, is released into the atmosphere. The expansion of the agricultural frontier is responsible for 70-90% to 90 of world deforestation. This one source produces 15-18% to 18 of global greenhouse gas emissions. Industrial farming to produce monocultures on deforested land, industrial agriculture uses tractors and farm machinery that burn gasoline, which is a fossil fuel. It also uses fertilizers and agrotoxins. To produce chemical fertilizers requires large quantities of fossil fuels. Not only that, but intensive fertilizer use releases nitrous oxide, another potent greenhouse gas, into the atmosphere. Since the land is taking up with monoculture, farm animals have to be raised in concentrated feeding operations, or CAFOs. This produces tons and tons of surplus matter. The matter releases methane, another greenhouse gas. Monoculture CAFOs, fertilizers and agrotoxins account for 11-15% to 15 of global greenhouse gas emissions. Transportation In the industrial food system, raw materials and products have to travel over great distances. Some of the soybeans produced in Argentina go all the way to China, where they are used in chicken feed. The chickens produce eggs that are exported to Hong Kong, or the chickens themselves are exported as broilers to the United States. Much of her food is produced in faraway places under industrial conditions. It travels thousands of kilometers before reaching our plate. And of course, transportation burns fossil fuels, an estimated 5 to 6 percent of total greenhouse gas emissions are caused by food transportation. Processing and Packing The food industry processes crops into consumer-ready food and drink products. Your supermarket shelves are filled with these products. They are marketed in all shapes and sizes under hundreds of different brand names. The industry targets consumers with aggressive advertising. Food processing and packing burns an enormous amount of fossil fuels, and that means more greenhouse gases are released. 
About 8 to 10 percent of global warming gases come from industrial food processing and packing. Refrigeration and supermarkets. Once the food industry has processed foods into attractive consumer ready products, they have to be refrigerated so they can be sold in big supermarkets. This adds another 2 to 4 percent to global greenhouse gas emissions. Waste. You might not believe it but the industrial food system throws away nearly half the food that it produces. Why? Because its goal is not to feed people, it's to maximize corporate profits. Right at the start of the food chain, a lot of food is left in the fields just because it doesn't meet the requirements of the big food companies. It won't survive the long trip to the warehouse or in the processor, or it won't be fresh enough by the time it reaches the supermarket or the restaurant. But it's even worse when food does reach the market, only to be thrown away into garbage heaps and landfills, rooting food waste amidst large amounts of greenhouse gases. Most of the organic waste produced by human beings come from the food system. It's responsible for 3-4% to of global emissions. But hey, luckily, we have some solutions that we would like to share with you. Food Sovereignty 5 Steps to Cooling the Planet and Feeding People Listen to me now, pay attention. The good news is that we have solutions. Feeding the soil, agroecology local production, land for small farmers, rejecting forced solutions. By working together, small farmers can cool the planet. First solution is to give back to the earth what industrial agriculture is taking out of it during the 20th century. The relationship between food production and climate depends on soil management. But unsustainable agriculture has destroyed soil organic matter. This process has generated 25 to 40 percent of the excess carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. We can return this carbon dioxide to the soil by building up organic matter using generations old farming practices. Cover cropping, crop rotation, following and integrated animal production. That's good for everyone because organic matter is the basis of farms and food. It provides fertility and it creates a sponge that stores up excess rainwater for dry weather. The second solution is to stop using agrotoxins and chemicals. Instead, we need to promote small scale mixed farms based on the science of agroecology. Industrial agriculture depletes the soil and it also causes pests and weeds to become resistant to chemicals. So more fertilizers has to be added and more toxins are needed to kill the pests. Small farmers around the world can produce food without chemicals based on our extensive store of knowledge and the wide variety of seeds, crops and animals that we preserved. You won't find any bare soils in our farms. We use the land efficiently, producing fruits and vegetables, alongside farm animals. The manure gets turned back into fertilizer, which we use to feed the soil. Even wild plants can be sources of food, medicine, textile and wood. For us, there's no such thing as weed. Everything is connected and it all makes the system work. We need to restore balance to the food system by putting livestock animals back on small farms where they belong. The third solution for cooling the planet is to reduce food miles. We need to promote local consumption of fresh food. The corporate logic of carrying around food around the world and back just doesn't make any sense. 
globalized industrial agriculture is designed to produce raw materials for export. To keep those supermarket display cases full of frozen products, it's also the world's number one source of greenhouse gas emissions. To reduce emissions, we have to redirect food production towards local markets and a healthy fresh food. We have to get away from processed food. This is maybe the fight of our lives. After all, corporations and governments have a lot invested in growing the international trade in food and beverages. The fourth solution for cooling the planet is to give land back to peasants so they can produce food locally, based on the principles of agroecology, stopping land concentration and mega farms. In the last 50 years, 140 million hectares of fertile land has been taken over by four big industrial monocultures. Soybeans Old palm, canola, and sugarcane. Every day, corporations and governments are working to kick small farmers and farm communities off their land to make way for huge monoculture plantations. It's got to the point where peasants and small farmers are squeezed on less than a quarter of the world's farmland. But here's the amazing thing we still produce more than half the world's food. In fact, we produce 70 to 8 percent of the food consumed in non-industrialized countries. Small farmers use planet-friendly practices to produce healthy food even more efficiently than the industrial farms. So, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, we need to redistribute farmland to small farmers through comprehensive land reform. The fifth solution is to reject and debunk fake solutions to global warming and to promote solutions that really can work. International climate negotiators agree that the industrial food system is a major contributor to greenhouse gases and that climate change poses huge challenges for our capacity to feed a growing world population. But there is no actual political will to change big food. <laughs> Instead, governments and corporations promote fake solutions, some of which are actually quite dangerous. Technologies like large-scale geoengineering, draft-resistant GMOs and agrofuels, for example. They try to brand as dangerous ideas as climate-smart agriculture. But these technologies don't get at the root of the climate crisis. If you ask us, they are not climate smart at all. In fact, they are as dumb as they can come. The reason is that none of these technologies has the potential to beat the climate crisis. The only effective solution is to say no to the industrial food system and the corporations who profit from it. We have to give back local food systems back to small farm communities and implement policies to support them. Like we said, we can cool the planet, but to do it, we need your commitment. That's why we're asking you and everybody else on the planet to get involved, because this is the fight of all our lives. It does matter where you live or what you do, whether you're a farmer or a consumer. We're building bridges between social movements and we're forcing governments to turn around and dismantle the industrial food system instead of being dependent on it. Maybe the most important thing is that we are all working together to find solutions and to make the most of the alternatives we already have. Together, together we can cool, cool the planet. planet.